So now we're going to talk about finding projects that apply to your company and the work that you do. And the way that we do that is setting up what we call a filter. Um, during different parts of the tutorial, I may say search, I may say filter, but really I'm talking about a filter and how we're going to pull up project information, again, as it applies to your company. The first search that we have that is available to all of our members is what we call the CSI division search. That's available to both basic and premium members. There's two levels of access to our website, but both members, both premium and basic users, can utilize the division search. Uh, a lot of companies are going to know what their division number is already. If you don't, we're going to lead you through the process of finding that out now. So under the Research tab, I'm going to go ahead and click on the CSI Master Format list. And now what we have here is a list of CSI numbers and the descriptives that the Builders Exchange has received since we started listing projects and putting them on our website, which has been quite a long time. So you'll see this is a very long list. So rather than searching through the entire list and spending hours finding the uh, CSI division number that applies to me, I can hit Control F, that's a Control F as in Frank, and I get a little window that pops up in front of me. So let's say we're working as a painting company and I wanna find out what division painting is in. I enter painting, let the search run. You'll see now at the top I've got some results and I can hit enter and it's going to scroll through this listing for me and what I'm looking for when I'm doing this is finding a big chunk where my keyword shows up and here we are we see the word painting showing up numerous times within division 9 so what that tells me is that as a painting contractor division 9 is what I'm going to want to enter into my CSI search field so back at the filters page we know what division number we want to use I'm going to go ahead and click on the orange plus button. That's the tool we use to set up a new filter. At this page, the create a new filter page, some people get a little confused, a little scared. There's a lot of information here, but don't be scared. We're going to break it down one by one for you so it makes sense. If you recall, we're doing the CSI division search. So we want to enter in the number 09 into the search because that's the division that we just found when we ran through the CSI index search. And we want to tell the website to search only in the spec index. So right now, literally telling the website, find me all the projects that have Division 9 in the table of contents for the spec book. Moving down, we're going to talk about phases, types, and categories. At this point, people see these selections and they tend to get what I call click happy. But before you do that, just take a moment and I'm going to run through what all of this means for you as far as finding projects that are out to bid. If we're thinking logically about it, we're trying to find projects with Division 9 in the table of contents. Table of contents in a spec book. The only time a spec book is available for searching on our website is when the project is actively out to bid. So again, planning projects, we'll talk about those more later. Those are projects that are in the design phase. So there aren't plans and specs to search through. After the project bids, apparent lows and contract awards, we pull the bidding documents offline. So again, searching for projects with Division 9 and leaving it at bidding is going to find you what you need to find uh, for projects that are currently out to bid. Over here, we've got types and categories. I like to use the example of the roofing company. So right now up at the top, I know we're searching for uh, Division 9. However, let's say a roofing company was certainly setting up a search and they get excited, they see roofing and re-roofing. So they think they're gonna see all the project coming into the exchange that have to do with roofing and re-roofing. However, I wanna point out that my coworkers, the reporters here at the Builders Exchange, are allowed to choose one type and one category for each project, the most logical. So if a project is an addition or an addition remodeling or a new construction of say Irondale High School, all of these situations are going to include a roof. And those are the categories that my coworkers are going to use. But if the roofing contractor only selects roofing and re-roofing, they will miss out on those projects. So that right there is uh, one of the reasons that I tell people when they're first setting up a search to leave the phases, types, and categories as they're first set up defaulted for a reason. So don't make any selections in the types. It's going to include everything. Same thing with the categories. In my opinion, um, is it really going to matter to the painting contractor if the project is educational or a senior assisted living project? Most likely not. They're going to want to know that that search has their division nine in the table of contents. Okay. Scrolling down, members have the option if they want to search for projects and narrow their search based on a criteria of location. If you don't make any selections here, it's going to include 
the entire five state area uh, that we cover here at the Builders Exchange. So when I click on the state of Minnesota, I get a map of the United States. I mentioned that we cover the five state area. You cover Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. All of that's included with the membership here at the Builders Exchange. So I'm gonna click on the state of Minnesota. Let's say this painting contractor uh, can cover anywhere in the state of Minnesota, can travel anywhere and do any project there. Select all, back to my US map. Maybe the same thing applies with Wisconsin. I select all and go back to the map. What's interesting about the website, let's say this contractor can only go a certain many of miles into Iowa as far as traveling goes. So they're gonna go through and select the counties based on the locations that they do want to travel to. And you'll notice when we hover over these counties, it tells us what these counties are. So let's say they only wanna um, work as far as Northern Iowa, they can make that selection there. So once that selection's been made, go back to the map again, you'll see these three states that I've selected and I go back and close. So I've now narrowed my search down by location. So once you've set up your locations, if you choose to do so, um, leaving funding at both public and private unchecked and leaving include nightly email selected, leaving the default as they are. And we'll talk more about the nightly email updates later and why that's so important. So now we're gonna give the search a title. It's best to give the search a title that actually reflects what information it's gonna pull up when you run the search. So when you see the projects, you know what it actually means when you're seeing them pull up on screen. So we've got a title for our filter, and now I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. I'm gonna click the Save button again, just so I can show you how the project filter now appears on this page. You'll see the name of the filter. Yes, we've got nightly email updates turned on. From here, we can edit, run, or delete. Here's where I like to let our members know that when they log onto the website to search for projects and set up a particular filter to find projects on an ongoing basis, don't treat it as a Google search. You don't wanna set up a new filter every single time you log in. Your goal is to make sure that your search, your searches are few and broad enough to find everything that you need to find on the website. So now that we've set up a filter, I wanna show you how to run a search. And we're gonna go ahead and click on the run button to do that. All right, now that we've run the search, we get search results pulled up, and these are listed numerically by bid date. So when I scroll through the list, the numbers will get higher as the bid dates get further out. One thing I wanna point out when we're looking at this page is the difference between what a basic user is gonna see and a premium user is gonna see. Again, a premium user with access to plans, specs, and addenda is gonna have these spec section links called out directly underneath each project detail information. Uh, however, that's not what the basic user is going to see. To really see how this project applies to the basic user, they're going to want to click on Specs. And this is the full table of contents for the specifications. Scroll down, and there's Division 9. So that basic user can see what portions of Division 9 are included on this project. The last thing I want to point out about just generally running any type of filter on our website are the little tools that appear on the left hand side. Now within each project we have these little check boxes, the option to track with or without email. Again, we'll talk more about tracking projects later and what that means. The option to print or hide a project. So if you see a project that you don't want on your list, you can go ahead and hide that and it will disappear uh, from the website as far as your filters are concerned or any other list of projects. If you do accidentally hide a project that you want to unhide under the project menu, you can click on uh, My Hidden Projects and pull up a list and unhide those projects manually. So as far as these check boxes are concerned and, and these little links right here, I have the option to select different projects, hit the print button, and what's gonna happen now is the computer is gonna prompt a printout screen of just those two projects that I've selected. So that's a nice way if I wanna keep a paper copy of the projects that I'm interested in. Last, we've got this yellow button right here that's gonna to toggle your view between what we see here is a grid view and back to the detailed view. I myself like to see the detailed view, so I always leave it at that. Now that we've run a search, I want to show you what we do with project information as far as how it's called out on our website. So this is from the, deta or from the filters page of a filter that I've run. I'm going to go ahead and click on this blue expandable link right there, and the details page for this project is going to pull up in a new browser tab for me. 
The details page is perhaps one of the most important snippets of information that our reporters are going to supply for you on the website besides the plans and specifications. So what our coworkers do here at the Builders Exchange is they run through the specifications, they call out the bid date and the bid time, read through the scope, provide that information for you. Project notes, those are entered by again the staff at the Builders Exchange calling out specific things about the project that they think are important. In this situation, there were a few missing spec sections, so when they go through the bidding documents to put them online, they've gone through and noticed that there were some spec sections listed in the table of contents that were not in actually included in the specification, so contacted the architect and engineer on behalf of the members to get those hopefully um, issued via addenda. So scrolling down then, we've got the owner and design team. That's going to include architects, engineers, if there's a construction manager assigned to it, any consultants. So that's information that you would use if you have any technical questions about the project or the drawing and plans themselves. Okay. Scrolling back up, we've got the project vitals, project ID number, category, type of work, the first time we reported on the project, the last update, and then if there's an approximate estimate cost, we're going to supply that for our members as well. The project location area right here is going to tell us how many miles this project is from our current location, and that would be the main location that we have for your member company in the database. So that's nice as far as narrowing down whether or not that's a viable project as far as your, your territory goes. Total visitors, we're going to put this list right here, the total visitors number refers to the total number of individual computers that have looked at this project. This number underneath it, the unique visitors, is actually a clickable link that pulls up a list of the member companies of the Builders Exchange that have looked at this project, the type of work that they perform, and then how many times they've looked at that project. So this is sometimes helpful information if you want to look at who else is interested in this project. And then noting that all the companies in red on this list are in fact bidding on this project. So when I scroll down, I'm going to see a bunch of different companies listed, and when I see those red companies like that in front of me, that tells me that those companies are listed on the bidders list for a particular project. Speaking of bidders list, that's where we're going to head next. So I'm going to close this window out and go back to the bidders list for this project. Once I click on bidders, I get brought to a page that has a listing of all the companies that we know of that are bidding on this project current date. Over here we've got the bidder types on this project listed down by um, alphabetically I can go ahead and click on specialties division 10 if I want to pop right down to that portion of the bidders list rather than scroll through the entire list. Back to this concept of who's a member of the builders exchange companies with an M behind their name are uh, members of the builders exchange. So back at the top of the bidders list, we've got this yellow plus button that is going to allow our members to add themselves to a bidders list for a project. This is a perfect thing for, say, a general contractor that wants to let their co-members know they're bidding on a project. I can click on this expandable link right here, get a list of all the personnel that work at the Builders Exchange, perhaps there's a particular contact that's associated with the project. Once you select their name, their email is going to populate, and you select the category of work that you want to be listed as and then add any other additional information. Perhaps you want your bid submitted a certain way or at a certain time, you can go ahead and put that information there and it will then pop populate underneath your company name back on the bidders list. And you would go ahead and save those changes to make yourself appear on the list. Back here, I want to point out these check boxes. Let's say I'm a subcontractor and I want to put together an email and I want to send out one email to all of these generals at one time. If I select this box right here, you'll notice now all the check boxes next to these other general contracting companies has happened. Once I select this um, envelope button there, it's going to populate an email and automatically fill in the correlating emails with these contacts back on the website. So you can send a one email blast out to uh, multiple companies at a time. The print icon right here allows us to print the bidders list. We can print whole types of bidders. We can print specific companies. Or if we don't make any selections and hit the print button, we are going to get a full list of the bidders for this particular project. So here's my print page of the bidders for this project. Once I hit print, I would then have a bidders list in hand. Back at the details page, I want to call your attention to the notes tab. If we click on that, you get this area for notes where you can enter in information that only people logging in as your company can see. So let's say this is your project, you don't want any other coworkers to bid on it or to do a takeoff on it, so you leave a note for them 
you say, this is my project. Do not touch Jill. All right, so I've entered my note. I'm gonna save those notes. Back at the details page, there's my note for me. And at any time I can click that little blue pencil, edit or delete that note. Back at the details page, I wanna finally call your attention to these tools over on the left hand side. These tools are helpful um, because with these two first ones, we've got the blue envelope and then the green envelope with the exclamation point. Those are my tracking buttons. If I select this one, I track the project with email. If I select this, I track the project without email. Again, in just a moment, we'll talk a little bit more about tracking projects, but I'm gonna go ahead and track this project with email because I prefer to do that. These icons down here, if you choose to click this one that looks like a little basket, you would hide that project and not have it appear on your filters or on the website. Again, we talked about unhiding those via the project menu at the top. Last, we've got another option to print the information for this project. We can print the details. So the top of your page is gonna have the details information back that's on this website right now. And then you can tell the website what other portions of the project you want printed out. So I've selected bidders, plans, specs, and addenda, and I click print. Now I'm gonna get a details page of the project that's gonna pull up not only the details and the bidders list, but also there's the table of contents for the plans and specifications too. This button right here is gonna allow me to do the same thing that I've just done, only email that information to a coworker. So let's say I've gone through the website, I'm gonna take care of submitting the bids, but I want my coworker Amy to go ahead and prepare the takeoff for me. So I might tell her to prepare takeoff, go ahead and email that, and my coworker Amy is going to get an email with the information that I've just selected on the website. Back at the desk pad page, now I want to call your attention to the red portion at the bottom called My Nightly Email. So we've talked about tracking projects and filtering projects. This is where that information is now going to all pull together for me. So it's important to know that the filters are going to work for you in two ways. One, the nightly email update on a daily basis is going to run itself and email you a list of the projects that apply to your filter criteria that you've set up. So that information is going to be here, as well as when you run through the website, it can express the importance more of tracking projects. Because once you've tracked a project, you've told the website, hey, keep track of this project for me so you don't have to keep checking back and, and see what's going on with it on a day-to-day -day basis because the website's going to do the work for you. All of these, just like the blue windows up here, are expandable. So if I wanted to see a list of my track projects, I go ahead and click on that and it's expanded my list for me. This is very convenient if you want to go ahead and just get to one of your projects quickly without having to search for it, whether it be through your list of filter results or through the quick search box. So if you want to go to one of these projects, again, click on the title of the project or uh, the blue expandable to pull it up that way. So those are my track projects. Track project changes, so if there are any changes to my track projects, those are going to be right here. When I expand that window, it tells me not only the name of the project, again, click on the title or the expandable to open it up, but also what and when was updated on each of the projects that I'm tracking. New filter results, those are gonna show me my new projects that appear based on the search results that I set up or the filters that I have set up back on the filter page. Just like up here, we've got these two buttons right here. It's gonna allow me to click on these buttons and customize this. So right here, I've clicked on today. Now here's where it's important to understand that our website sends out the nightly email update to one email per company. So some companies forward that on to their coworkers. Other companies don't. They come to the website and understand that this right here directly correlates and mirrors that nightly email update from last night. So at 4.30 p.m. when that nightly email update goes out, the website also populates this information to match it. So you don't have to forward on that information anymore. You can refer your coworkers back to the fact that yesterday or today, there are 17 changes to my track projects. And then also there were 10 new projects on the filters that I set up. So again, a great way to stay on top of the projects on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, during throughout the year, we might receive anywhere from 30 to 60 projects a day. So this is really the tool that's gonna help you stay on top of that information so you don't get overwhelmed. 
Back at the project filters page, we're now going to set up the second type of filter that our members have the option to set up. Before we dig into it any further though, I do want to let you know that uh, based on the two levels of access to the website, this search that we're going to set up now is called the SAM search. It stands for Specification and Addendum Mining. So what it's going to do is it's going to look through or mine through the specifications and the addenda for specific keywords that we enter. Premium access includes plans, specs, and addenda. So if you don't have premium access, don't have access to specs, you can't run the SAM search. So um, if you are interested in upgrading from basic to premium, don't hesitate to give us a call and we can walk you through the process of doing that. So we're going to go ahead and set up that SAM search. Click our plus to create a new filter. In the previous CSI division search, we used the CSI code fields. In this situation, we're looking for keywords. Again, we're going to be telling the website to look for specific keywords within the spec book and the addenda for the projects. So I'm going to go ahead and keeping up with the concept of the painting company, I'm going to type in exterior painting and interior painting. Now once I've done that, I want to make sure that I search the contents of the spec book. So if you remember before, the CSI limited the search to the spec index. This time we're making the search more broad in that we're searching for keywords now in the entire contents of project spec book. So it's going to run the search and read through all the specifications and find the words exterior painting and interior painting on that fuzzy search logic. We talked about phases, types, and categories when we went through and set up the CSI code search um, filter. So if you want to go back and reference that, you can do that there. Same thing would apply with the counties. You can run back to that CSI division search if you want to review on how that's set up. So right now we're not going to make any selections within here and include all of the projects in the five state area that we cover, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Last, we're going to give our filter a name, call it what it is, and now I'm going to go ahead and save that filter. Once the results pull up, I want to save that filter again now just so we can go back to this filter page and show you now that we've got both of those filters set up for us. Again, keeping in mind not deleting these filters, running and editing them, perfecting your filters, not deleting your filters, okay, because these are not Google searches. These are your ongoing way of knowing when I run this filter, I'm going to find all the projects that I need in a real-time format. So that's what we're going to do now is we're going to run that SAM search, and the premium user is going to be able to run this SAM search on the website based on keyword criteria that they've set up in their search, and underneath each project, we're going to see those pulled up here underneath each project. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial video. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call or visit mbex.org forward slash tutorial for a printable version of this tutorial. MBEX would like to thank the sponsors of this video, The Builders Group, Johnson, Adolphson Peterson Construction, Market and Johnson, Scaffold Service, Sheet Metal Connectors.